Hey guys, and welcome to another Hope Daily. Uh, so as you may know, we are now journeying through uh, the book of Ephesians, which is really just a theological masterpiece. It's absolutely awesome, so rich um, uh, in all that is in it, from what Paul uh, wrote to the Ephesian church. Um, so we're going to be in the second half of uh, chapter 1, looking at from verses 15 to 23 in today's devotional. So let's just pray uh, before we begin. Yeah, dear Lord, we just... Thank you for your goodness and your grace. God, we just pray, Holy Spirit, do you just awaken our hearts and minds to your word. Let your living word speak to us. Uh, teach us and, uh, and re reveal something of your nature and of your character, something of your plans and your purposes and your desire for us, your church. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So fantastic. So we'll be in from verse 15 to 23 of Ephesians chapter 1. And I guess my emphasis for this passage would be about being God's glorious inheritance. And we'll come on to that. So it says in verse 15, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I've not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. So, so first of all, that should give an encouragement and an instruction to us. Um, uh, you know, to for us in our prayer life to be to be thanking um, God for the faith of other people and to be remembering them in our prayers. Often our prayers can be quite self-centric and, and maybe materialistic or, or practical, asking God for for practical things in our life. Now that's not a bad thing. That's that's a good thing. But there is almost like a um, you know like a, like a higher value of prayers in terms of praying and thanking uh, for for people's faith and uh, and thanking that people know know Jesus. Um, and remembering them in our prayers, um, you know, learning to pray about others, um, to intercede for others more regularly. And so that's a that's a very common theme in Paul's prayers. Um, verse seventeen. I keep asking, um, and, and, and so this is really what Paul is is praying. You know, we now we get to get an insight into what Paul prays for the Ephesian church. What does Paul pray for? For other believers and he says this i keep asking that the god of our lord jesus christ the glorious father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better you know paul's heartbeat paul's prayer isn't for their just 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 for the practical circumstances of their lives often we might pray for other people we might pray for you know for them to get that job or to, to get that house that they that they want we might pray for a difficult situation to end in someone's life we might pray for a practical thing but what paul prays for um, is for a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that they might know god better and um, you know what one of paul's highest priorities and what what should be one of our highest priorities is that we might know god better have a deeper and a richer a more fuller relationship with our living god um, and that comes through a spirit of wisdom and revelation. We, it comes through a, a relationship with the Holy Spirit and being uh, sensitive and, and, and obedient to God's word because it's through the, through the word of God, through the Bible, that God is revealing himself to us. And as we get to know more about him through the word of God, we grow in relationship with him uh, in, you know, um, in accordance and in step with the, the Holy Spirit. So yeah, so we need to have a real heartbeat to know God better, to walk with Him more closely, to have a to have a more accurate understanding of who He is, what He desires, uh, and, and kind of how He operates. Um, verse eighteen. I also pray. So this is the kind of the prayer part B, which is kind of where I want to focus on into this devotional. I uh, I also pray. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know. Um, and then he kind of lists a few different things here. So he says, "I want the want the eyes of your heart to be enlightened," meaning that I don't just want this stuff, this stuff, this theology, this this great truth. What Emily was talking about in uh, yesterday's devotional in the first part of Ephesians one. I don't want that just to be head stuff. I want it to be heart stuff. I want the eyes of your heart to be enlightened. I want you to realize this. I want you to get this. I want the penny to drop. Um, uh, uh, I want, I want that to know, uh, so I want you to know the hope to which he has called you, 
um, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe. So he says, I, I want you to know the hope to which he has called you, this, you know, the, the living hope in Jesus Christ, the hope of God's uh, restoration of all creation to himself, uh, the hope of an end to sin and death and pain and suffering, um, you know, the hope of eternal life. That is the hope to which we are called. Uh, secondly, um, the, uh, what does he say? Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Uh, now, this isn't, this isn't our inheritance. Now, the Bible talks about God being our inheritance, you know, eternal life being our inheritance and that, and that is true we do have an inheritance in god it's something that we are waiting to receive and that we've received in part but not fully um, but there's also a, a, a parallel truth that we are God's inheritance, that God has invested in us and that, uh, and that, that God is awaiting for his inheritance to be, to, to be fulfilled. And his inheritance is in us. It's his church. We are his glorious inheritance. We are his saints, his glorious inheritance in the saints. Um, and, and, and it's so powerful to try and get that wrapped around our, our heads and our hearts is that God's grace is so amazing that even though we are, 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 are wretched sinners who have been saved from death and from, from sin, um, but that uh, through salvation, we are God's glorious inheritance. We are God's like prized possession. We are his like prized ornament um, because, of, because of the grace that he has uh, worked in our life. Um, so and and it's a really powerful thing to get to kind of get that into your mind that that that, that, that being a believer in Jesus Christ, being part of His church, be, being a child of God through the gospel, uh, means that you are you're part of God's glorious inheritance. You are a glorious inheritance. That that God sees you as something that really special. That He is invested into your life he's invested his grace into your life that your life might must magnify his glory um you know that, that that the that the heavenly hosts and all of creation might might look upon the church might look upon me and you and see god's grace god's kindness being displayed as it's displayed in our life that that we are the we are the uh, uh, the, the beneficiaries we are the we are the recipients of god's grace um, and that God wants to reveal his kindness. God wants to reveal his goodness in uh, and through our lives. Uh, we are his glorious inheritance. And if that doesn't make put a smile upon your face, then uh, think about it a bit more until it does. <laughs> because it's, it's such an awesome truth to think that, about the fact that, that you are God's inheritance. You are his inheritance um, th through believing in Jesus Christ. Um, then again, again, and then it kind of goes on to talk about power um and um, because what one thing we might struggle to accept or believe that we are god's glorious inheritance because our life and our, our hearts and our minds are just so riddled with sin aren't they is that we're so weak that we fail day by day um we hurt ourselves we hurt other people uh, we often we feel trapped in sin and we're like how on earth how on earth could i a, a, a wretched being be God's glorious inheritance. You know who would who would want me? Never mind, make me their inheritance. Um, you know, certainly not glorious by any means. Uh, but that's where it takes the power of God, uh, because because then it says, you know, I want you to know this incomparably great power for us who believe um, that His power is incomparable. Um, that power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him high um, at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, in that every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. You know, if, Christ, if God's power could raise Christ from the dead and seat him behind the heavenly realms, then God's power um, can take uh, a sinner's life like me like you um, uh, uh, um and transform it into his glorious inheritance that is the effect of god's power it's not it's not based on you it's not based on your performance it's not based on how well you can please god it's based on god's power uh, at work through you through the gospel activated through faith because of his grace um for, for the result of his glory um you know god's power is transforming you into his glorious inheritance and that's just amazing 
Uh, then it finishes off, and God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. You know, we're meant to, we're meant to be filled with God, um, that, you know, that um, we're not just being saved just to be empty, but we were saved to be filled with God, to, 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 to mirror his image, to reflect his glory, uh, because we are his glorious inheritance. So just meditate on that today. Uh, and just see how it stirs your heart. But have an awesome day. God bless you. And remember that you are God's glorious inheritance. Amen.